for you to sing in a mask. Recently, in Dallas, there was a Republican rally, a Pence rally, and the thing from the news reporters was, why was this 100-voice choir singing without masks? They should have had their masks on to sing. No, that's not true. The person didn't have all the information. So, um, unfortunately, I assumed that all those 100 choir members had probably been COVID tested prior to this big thing. They actually weren't. Their temperatures were taken and so forth. So, in other words, it really wasn't a safe situation. So, if you are 12 feet from each other, which many of you are, you guys that are back there, the Venice, I guess that is, and all the people that are on the other side of the trees, if you're 12 feet from other people, take off your mask and sing. It's going to be your only chance to do it. If you're sitting with your family, you can breathe on them. You've been breathing on them all week long, right? So I think most of you look like you're spaced out enough that you could take off your mask and sing. There might be a couple people that aren't. And if it's important to you to sing, you can move a few feet. Thank you. Morning. Welcome to our service of worship this morning. It's great to see all of you. And a welcome to in with our live stream. I just uh, want to uh, reiterate what, what Lois is uh, saying um, uh, about, about the singing and about the importance of, of trying to remain as safe as we can in this environment, which of course is one of the reasons why we have chosen uh, to, to do our second outdoor worship service. And we are trying to rotate these in uh, on a fairly consistent basis. Uh, but of course, with the shifting situation that we have in the world today, uh, you need to stay tuned and we will keep you informed as to what uh, the plan is next. We are going to, to try to continue together for as long as we can, as long as we can make it uh, as safe as possible uh, to be gathered. Because I think it's important for us to feel that we are part of a worshiping community. Uh, and that's why it's so wonderful to see all of you today and to be a part uh, of this group. Um, <clears throat> just uh, a real quick announcement. The, the offering plate is on this side table. The bulletin is there as well. Um, if you don't have it, uh, I invite you to come up as, as we're preparing to get started. We also have our prepackaged communion elements. Uh, if you didn't bring bread and wine from home, then... Uh, then please uh, avail yourself of, of those too, so that we can uh, so that we can celebrate the sacrament together when we come to that point in time. We are going to get started this morning um, in the same way we have been rehearsing for the last 45 minutes, probably uh, with a song. We're taking a page out of the, the non-denominationals here. We're having a gathering song. Usually for them, though, it's three or four or five songs. We're just going to do one. Uh, we will sing together, Here I Am, Lord. The words are printed in the bulletin.
now we join together in the order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord sends his word to us this day. Let us prepare ourselves to be good soil by confessing our sins. We observe some moments of silence together. God of abundant blessings, you sow your word, and we hear, but we flirt with the evil one, and he comes and snatches it away. Lord, you sow your word, and we hear, and receive it with joy, but it doesn't take root, because our soil is shallow. Lord, you sow your word, and we hear. Then we are distracted by the cares of this world, and the lure of money, and things grow up around us and choke off what it might yield. Forgive us, Lord. Continue to sow your word in our hearts and bring forth a harvest in us that will bear much fruit. Amen. Hear this good news and let it be planted in your souls. There is there now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set you free from the law of sin and death. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Through the peace and gratitude sown in our hearts, we say, and as we come to our time of greeting, I have been made aware that we have some neighbors uh, on their porch uh, who, are, who are participating and listening to our service, and we welcome them. We are glad that you are here with us. Good morning. God abundantly casts seeds of good news upon us. May we be the good soil getting ready for the sowing of God's word and God's love. May we bear much good fruit to love God and serve our neighbors. Most wonderful God, you have sown in us a seed which longs to put down deep roots and then grow towards your light. By your spirit, please tend and nurture that which you have planted, that in spite of hard seasons or the work of evil, predators, we may bring forth a harvest of wonder, love, and praise. Through Jesus Christ, the sower of the kingdom. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah in the 55th chapter. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the things for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be caught up, cut off. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. This time I invite you, uh, well, we will, we have a hymn of preparation planned for today. Uh, Lord, let my heart be good soil. So as the band leads us, let us join together and sing.
from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew in the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great cloud, crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since there was no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, and yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, and in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Now I see only uh, two children uh, present, really, uh, this morning, but uh, this this is kind of a, an audience participating sort of thing, so I'd like to do it anyway. Uh, Savannah, Sabrina, would you stand up? Keep your masks on. You're going to be my seeds. And what I want you to do is go and stand appropriately far apart from someone else or another group uh, in the yard and just stand beside them. Now, so go and find a group other than your family and, and stand beside them and stay six feet away, okay? All right. What I want you to do is hold out your index finger and point at them. Okay, these are your seeds. I want you to turn to the person and say, Jesus loves you. Okay, that seed has been planted. And now, the person in whom that seed was planted, you turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus loves you. And let's see how far we can spread the word. Okay. So that's how it's supposed to work. We plant seeds. Uh, of God's love uh, and grace in people. And when they hear it and receive it and are glad, they share that, that good word with, their, with others. And that's part of what this parable is about this morning. Thank you all, uh, my seeds. Uh, you can go back and, and have a seed. Let us pray together. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
parable in today's gospel reading, known to most of us as the parable of the sower, is a seminal parable in Jesus' teachings ministry. A version of this parable appears in all of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, it was a, a parable that was very important to his followers, to the early church, and I believe to us as well. And, and, and it's one that we receive with joy because I think of the harvest that comes at the end uh, from the seeds that fall into the good soil. Some 100 fold, some 60, some 30. That sounds glorious, and we celebrate that. Uh, and, and I think the celebration of the harvest that comes at the end of the parable causes us very often to overlook that we have a very reckless farmer, don't we? Uh, somebody who has not planned very well for the sowing of the seed. Just goes out and starts slinging seed everywhere, indiscriminately, without any concern about where it would land. And so indeed, this farmer is, is fortunate to have a harvest at all, uh, with some of it landing on, uh, on a path where it cannot put down any roots and the birds come along and snatch it up. Some landing in rocky soil where there really is no uh, opportunity for the seed as it springs up to, to continue or be, be sustained, and then others falling among the weeds. This farmer has done nothing to prepare the soil. No fertilization, no weeding has happened. So what is this parable teaching us about God's kingdom? Now, Jesus told stories that used characters and images from daily life that were common to the people he spoke to. And of course, these are people who lived in an agrarian society, so they were commonly uh, or used to seeing farmers out in their fields sowing crops. So they were able to relate to these images. Not so much true of us, however. Um, but I do believe that this parable has a very important and, and, and appropriate um, relevant message for the church today and probably for the church and, and all times in between as well. I have never been a gardener. Probably you don't have much difficulty believing that. Uh, I've never been attracted by the prospect of going out and digging in the dirt. Besides that, Deb and I don't have a very good track record of keeping indoor plants alive either. You know, we get those periodically as gifts, and we water them. We do um, our, our best to give it the sunlight it needs, but invariably, the plants die. So there's no green thumb here. But uh, back in May, when uh, my son graduated from college, sort of, it wasn't an actual physical graduation, but, but after he moved down uh, to Georgia to spend the summer with us, he came with this ambition to, uh, to have some raised bed gardens in our backyard. And of course, Deb, as she has always done, uh, immediately embraced this idea. She's always been a huge supporter of my son's uh, passions and, and hobbies. And so, uh, so she embraced the project with great excitement. But they did not approach things the way the farmer does in today's parable. They did some planning. They researched raised bed gardens online, and Deb talked to her sister, who uh, has raised many organic vegetable gardens over the years and had some helpful advice to give. They acquired the supplies, built the beds, uh, got the plants and the seeds, they drew a grid, mapping out exactly where everything would be planted, where all the seeds would be placed. All of them appropriately socially distanced from one another, uh, the, the correct number of inches. Uh, and uh, of course, they have watered the garden dutifully twice a day, very often. Uh, and, and Deb has even fashioned uh, a spray fertilizer out of uh, eggshells fermented in apple cider vinegar. This was another hint that she got from her sister. 
So they're working hard on this garden. And we're seeing some results. There are some tomatoes, some peppers. Uh, it looks like the, the potatoes are, 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 are doing well. Uh, they, they've also planted carrots um, and, and a pumpkin and a watermelon even in, in these raised bed gardens. Yeah, the squash mm, aren't doing so well though. Deb's really disappointed about that. Uh, she was really looking forward to being able to harvest some squash from the garden. And it looks like that probably won't happen this year. One of the things I think I've gained from this experience, though I've done very little uh, physical labor uh, to, to help out with the garden, uh, I've learned that growing things is hard. Uh, so in all likelihood, we are going to have to be content as first-time gardeners with a few tomatoes and some peppers and maybe a potato or two. Maybe not everything that we had hoped to gain from planting this garden, but I think for first-timers, uh, Deb and my son are, are doing pretty well. And, and I think that's part of the lesson, part of the message for us uh, as sowers of God's word. It's hard work, and there's no guarantee of, of success with it. Now, we normally probably don't think of ourselves as sowers of God's word, but indeed all of us are. That's what the exercise uh, with the children and, and, and passing the message, Jesus loves you, this morning was all about. We are all indeed sowers of God's word. Uh, sometimes we, uh, we do this intentionally. I think we do it with our children. As we raise them, we try to bring them up in the faith, uh, share Bible stories with them, share our faith with them, perhaps uh, have a time of prayer at home, and hope that all of that takes root. Take them to church. Take them to Sunday school. You know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Deb and I can attest to that with our own children. And if you think about the people who have been in your influence, over the years, uh, in whom you may have planted a seed of God's love and compassion, or attempted to. How many such gardens, metaphorically speaking, have you planted from which you saw a, a, an abundant harvest? I guess, my guess would be that you probably can only identify maybe a handful uh, at most. But indeed, we are like the sower. We're out there slinging seed all the time uh, in, all, in all kinds of places uh, without even being aware of it. Uh, and it's landing on, on all sorts of different surfaces uh, and soils. And some of it may indeed be taking root, and we just aren't aware of it. I think that's part of uh, what we are challenged to understand. Let's reflect on the seed that is sown in the parable for a moment. Uh, the first seed lands on the path, and the birds come along, snatch it up, and eat it. So it grows nothing. But it does nourish the birds, doesn't it? The, the, the other seed that falls uh, in, in soil that is less than ideal has life for a brief period of time. Uh, in the shallow soil, it puts down what roots it can, and it starts to grow up. But then uh, the harsh conditions, the, the sun comes along and scorches the, uh, the plants and they die. And then the other quarter of the seed lands among thorns and thistles, and we know what happens uh, to that. We have, we have that in our, in our own gardens, in our own yards at home. The thorns and the thistles seem to survive when nothing else does. They grow up around and choke off the other plants. And indeed, that is what happens, I think, in, in life, in the world. The evil one comes along and snatches uh, what seed it, it, he can before it has an opportunity to, to germinate or take root or, or produce anything. And, uh, and, and there are many harsh conditions in the world, conditions that are harsh to the gospel. Uh, one may receive the gospel and, and, and hear it with joy, for a time, but those uh, those newly developing uh, ideals and, and convictions can sometimes be set aside when it's more convenient not 
to have them uh, in order to get ahead with whatever it is we're doing, whatever our agendas are. And the thorns do indeed grow up around us. Uh, the, ch the difficulties, the challenges, the hardships we experience and choke off the Word of God. So perhaps we can't afford to, uh, to pass uh, judgment on this farmer. Uh, each of the seeds that he sows provides something. Uh, there is some growth and there is some nourishment for, for the animals uh, that consume it. And, and perhaps what that is saying to us as a church is that we need to adjust our standards of what constitutes success. What is success in the church, after all? We usually think of it in terms of numbers. Well, when was the last time we were able to have a, a membership class in this church where we took in a dozen or 15 new members into our congregation? That would be a harvest to celebrate, wouldn't it? But it hasn't happened very often, I don't think, across the history of this congregation. And it hasn't happened at all in, in my tenure here as pastor. Um, and how many times have we had a stewardship campaign that netted the increase in, of 20% in giving, or 10% or, or even? That would be uh, a victory worth celebrating. I, I know our treasurer would be celebrating that, wouldn't he? But we don't get successes like that very often in the church. Not obvious ones that we are able to celebrate and say, ah, look at this harvest, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. And so I think we have to look at the seed that we've attempted so and, and pray that that seed does take root and grow, even though we may never see the results of it. I think that is part of the lesson today. Homework help, uh, before we had to suspend it, was perhaps our, our probably our most vital outreach ministry uh, in, in the congregation. It had been uh, operating for about five, six years uh, here at Amazing Grace, and it had grown over that time. And we had to suspend that even before we suspended worship. Uh, we, we stopped gathering uh, for homework help. And as with everything else that has been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, we don't know what's going to happen with that going forward. Uh, if we attempt to, to reestablish it at some point, will we succeed in that? Or is it going to have been uh, a ministry that will and die under the influence of COVID-19? But even if it does, does that mean that uh, the work the sowing of seed that occurred during that five or six year period of time was a waste somehow? Absolutely not. Because I believe many so seeds of, of God's love and compassion were sown in the lives of the children and the families who took part. And that seed may indeed take root and grow. It may, it may be years before it does. So, so we may not be around to see it at all. We may not be the wiser. We may not know that any of that seed has taken root and has grown in the lives of those families and those children. The important thing is that it might. If we can operate the way the sower does and, and go out slinging seed, some of it is bound to land in a place where it's going to take root and grow. And that is how the kingdom of God spreads. I used to keep a book in, in my last parish. Something happened to it in the move down to Georgia. It was a book in which I kept all of the thank you notes that I had received from members of that congregation in Connecticut. This is, this is a rare thing, uh, to, to receive a note in the mail thanking the pastor for something. It, it doesn't happen very often, you know, but, but people were kind enough. Some people were, took the time to, to jot down a thank you for some aspect of my ministry that, that was meaningful to them or to their family, and, and, and they would send me a thank you note very often. 
And I kept all of those thank you notes. Because when things got discouraging in the church, as they often do, I was able to go back and open that book and pull out some of those thank you cards and read over them again. And that gave me encouragement that indeed some seeds were sown and had borne fruit in the lives of at least a few people in the community. The message is that we are to be sowers, to go out slinging seed. And, and we may not know where it lands. Uh, many of the seeds that we, that we sow will not find the most fertile soil in which to land. Some will, will fall on a path, and the evil one will come along and, and snatch it up. Some will fall in rocky ground or among weeds and thistles, uh, and the conditions just will not be right. The, uh, the opposition to the gospel, which is significant in the world, comes along somehow and snuffs out the life as it begins to germinate and, and produce. But some of those seeds are bound to fall in fertile soil in the lives of people who are ready to receive the gospel and will take root and grow. And the truth is that you and I probably won't know when that happens. We're not afforded that opportunity, that blessing very often to see the seeds that have been planted take root and grow to the point where they are ready to be harvested. The important thing is that there will be a harvest. And that is what God promises us above all in our scripture readings today. In the first reading from Isaiah, God proclaims, My word will not return to me empty. Some of the seed will fall in good soil and take root and grow. And that is all that matters. It doesn't matter that you and I are there to see it or celebrate. Now we have a, uh, a piece of special music sung for us by Debbie Brady. Who Am I? A song originally recorded by the Christian band Casting Crowns.
now we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. It appears in the bulletin both in English and in Spanish, and I invite you to recite the creed in your primary language. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, Wendy McKenna will lead us in the prayers of the church. God, you sow your gifts abundantly upon the church and upon the world, inviting all to live with such depth that we may produce abundant blessings for your creation. Here are our intercessions on behalf of all who need your nurturing love as we pray. Sower of seed, produce good fruit. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Spread your grace generously within your church, O God, that she may be rooted deeply in your love and walk according to your spirit, sower of seed, produce good fruit. The amazing cycle of birth, growth, and death sustains your creation. Bring forth an abundant harvest. Keep farmers safe and teach us to cherish life in all its forms and stages. Sower of seed, produce good fruit. In places of war and unrest, bring peace, and in places of hatred, sow love. Help world leaders set aside their prejudices and their damaging political rhetoric, and work together for the good of all. Sower of seed, produce good fruit. We live in a land of plenty, and still there are those without enough to eat. Give us generous hearts to those who are hungry, Bless the hands of those who plant the harvest so that others might eat. Sower of seed, produce good fruit. Our world is troubled with the cares. Our world is troubled with the cares of the world and choked with the threat of COVID-19. Advance medical research and equip medical professionals with the tools to contain this pandemic so that together we may be blessed with a rich harvest of health and well-being. Sower of seed produce good fruit. So peace and healing in the hearts of those who are ill, dying, and grieving the loss of those dear to them. We pray to you for Marlene Solano and our own Robin, Robin Clavijo following the death of Marlene's husband and Robin's brother-in-law, John. We also raise the name of Daniel Parente, Robin Clavijo's brother, who has tested positive for COVID-19. We remember Michael Clark, who continues to rehabilitate after a severe infection that led to the amputation of his foot. We continue to pray for Art Scott on his rehabilitation and recovery. We praise to you, Peyton Irwin. We raise to you, Peyton Irwin, suffering from a flare-up of her friend's disease, for Charles Joni, dealing with depression, and for Marilyn Herburn and Elaine Burfield sower of seeds, produce good fruit. Bring us together in unity of heart and purpose to care for one another and sow your good word in the vast mission field surrounding us. Sower of seed, produce good fruit. Almighty God, you have planted your spirit with all creation. Nurture and bring about the abundant harvest of redemption for which you sowed your eternal word. Jesus buried him in death and raised him to life. Amen. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Now I invite you to turn and gesture to one another your signs of peace.
Now we uh, come to our time of celebrating the Eucharist together. And once again, if you did not bring uh, bread and wine or juice from home, we do have the self-contained package over here at the table, and uh, you're welcome to come over and, and help yourself. Uh, just a word of explanation if you haven't used these before. There is a very thin layer of cellophane at the top, uh, and you peel that back to get to the wafer. And then there is another covering for the cup. Uh, you peel that off to get to the juice, and I will uh, make you aware of when the appropriate time is to take the bread and the cup. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, and pray it in your primary language. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Now I invite you to take your bread, the body of Christ given for you. And the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. Now I invite you to join me in the prayer of commitment. God of harvest, gardener supreme, you place us at the center. Feed us, equip us, and having provided for us, look to a different harvest, a fruitfulness of lives and service to you and others. God of harvest, feed us, prune us, harvest us, that our lives might bring glory to you. Amen. Now receive this blessing and send it. May God the sower make you good and fertile soil. May Christ the seed bloom and grow in your words and actions. May the fruitful spirit bring forth a bountiful yield in your life. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending him is open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
like to offer a word of thanks to all the members of our band. Uh, they did an outstanding job, and especially to our master technician, Bob Schwartz, who is responsible once again for setting up the PA system. Uh, I think it's a pretty impressive uh, unit altogether. Thank you all. And now I'm going peace to sow good seed. Thanks be to God. Yeah.